Wow. Yes, I am live. This is John Reed, Diginomica. I, I'm, this is my official video podcast reboot, and I have the best possible guest. I got Brent Leary in the hot seat. What's going on, man? You know, I'm in hot Atlanta, so I guess it makes sense for me to be in the hot seat, man. But this is cool, man. Joining you for the for the maiden voyage. This is awesome, man. Indeed. I'm on LinkedIn Live and I'm also streaming on YouTube and our Diginomica f- Facebook page. Uh, if you're commenting on YouTube, um, I'm not really tracking those comments. So you might want to head over to LinkedIn or Diginomica Facebook if you want me to actually see your comments. In fact, um, Brent, I, I can only see like the uh, the branding crap. Oh, I got to click on comments. There we go. There it is. Yeah, they'll be see, flowing in. See, this is the old newbie. So we're actually going to be talking to Brent about enterprise video because you and Paul Greenberg and, and your CRM players crew, man, you had a slam dunk video session. What was it like? Last, was it two weeks ago now? It, it, it's hard to believe. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. And, and thank you. For being a part of it too don't don't leave that part out but yeah we yeah 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 we we were i mean it was kind of it was kind of an experiment what we were doing because everybody's kind of experimenting with all this you know streaming video and using link linkedin as a platform for streaming video and i i think i i've been on linkedin live doing you know streams personally and then also with paul and the players thing um for about a i guess about a year and a half or coming up on a year and a half and um, of course, with the pandemic, mo- everybody's trying to, you know, f- figure out how to stay connected and stay engaged and do you know, what they do normally, but do it virtually. And so, yeah, we we've been doing the CRM players for over a decade, but the pandemic forced us to kind of like do it on a weekly basis and be consistent and, and it's been kind of a, a lot of lessons learned, but I think the biggest lesson, like you had mentioned, we we did what we called the um, CRM Players Inaugural Executive Roundtable Conversation. And the idea, it was just literally an idea to say, hey, can we can we get the you know senior execs from the top five CRM companies based on market share? Uh, can we pull them all together and, and just have a conversation about what's going on in, you know, the state of the industry in the midst of this pandemic. And, and uh, we were pretty amazed that <laughs> we got all five of them to say yes. And, and so from that point on, it's like, okay, I guess we're going to do this thing now. So. Just a quick shout out to my old friend, Corey. Yeah. Corey, what's up? Glad, glad you spotted me on the LinkedIn stream. There it is. I appreciate LinkedIn promoting the crap out of me, even though this is my first time <laughs> back on the air. So who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> so uh, for, for those of you listeners on my podcast, this is my video podcast reboot. And you might be wondering what took so damn long. I am too. Um, <laughs> but let's just say the pandemic, man, that's a, that's a short, long <laughs> version of the story. Um, but anyway, back, back to back to this event, because it, I, I participated in one of your roundtables because you had like this massive structure. Um, you you had like a, like si- a whole series of roundtables. I mean, it was like a three hour extravaganza, but there was something like was it six six hundred viewers or something? I mean, it was the I, I think the thing the thing it wasn't so much the amount of people it was it was like the amount of engagement like was unbelievable. Like like just the passion of the people discussing it was what really caught me. Yeah, it it was really interesting. Um, I think at its height, we had about 500 people uh, watching in real time on LinkedIn. And then an additional like 130 some odd other people were watching on um, Periscope and Twitter. So what was yeah, there was there was that many people. But like you said, it was the engagement for for the first hour, which is where we had the kind of the executives from uh, Adobe, Microsoft, Oracle, Salesforce, and SAP. Um, and these are some pretty high, heavy hitter executives from each of those companies. We had them on for about 75 minutes. And it was just a, a continual conversation about, you know, things that are going on in the in the CRM space. But that wasn't the only conversation that was going on, man. It was the, the conversation in the comment section was really amazing to the point where uh, we had over 1,100 comments that that came just from LinkedIn 
uh, in that two and a half hour period. And in the first hour, 15 with the, the executives, it was going on. Comments were coming in so fast. I couldn't even pop them up. It was just nonstop. So I said, forget it, man. I can't put all these things up. But the conversation continued, to, you know, and the comments continued, even though they weren't getting featured on the screen, man. So that that was just a, 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 a complete surprise that how that that all worked out. But it worked out great. And then, and then, you know, the format was the first 75 minutes were with the, you know, the executives and, and we had, you know, some, a great discussion amongst them, but then Paul and I decided, why don't we try to do something that's kind of like what they, you see on like cable news and you see at the big debate. And then after the big debate, then you have like mm -hmm. this cast of characters come the on. Pun, and, the know, punditry, man, the punditry. Yeah, talking head clash. Right. And, yeah. and it's not just, two or three it's like you know 20 and they you, they come on in waves and so we were like we we have all these great folks that we know um that are in the industry and they have a lot to offer so once the kind of the the official round table uh ended then we decided let's keep it rolling let's bring in you know all these different people that have great uh perspectives too so we had i think it was about 10 additional analysts and you were one of them of course and then we also had our two uh players in residence which nicole france of uh constellation research and ginger conlin who's a veteran of about three or four different industry publications and so we brought them on to give us their take and then we brought on you know the first set of panelists and then another panel and then another panel and we just kept it rotating and not only were was those panels rotating, but once again, the comments, they just kept coming and it was great. So we must have had about three or four levels of conversations going on in that whole two and a half hour period. It was cool, man. Yeah, I just want a few quick shout outs in the chat. Jerry Bowles, nice to see you. Uh, I don't think I've seen you virtually before. Sandy and Alan Berkson. Alan, you again? <laughs> We can't, can't get away from that guy. <laughs> Alan, I just spent the last two days with Alan, and now he's <laughs> back for back for more. Uh, wait, wait, we, wait till he asks you about what your the, your corporate narrative for your podcast is. That oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll t I'll tell you my narrative in a nutshell, Alan. It's like if you can't beat him, join him. Um, <laughs> no, no. My my narrative is like you know bringing the underground vibe to enterprise media. Um, I just, man, Brent, I'm not going to knock your shows because I, I enjoy your shows. And I think actually though, you and I are kind of different. We have similar mentalities about video. I want to talk about that, but man, so much of the enterprise video I see is just crap, man. It's just, oh, uh, I mean, how many interviews like, oh my God, I got so-and-so in the chair. Like, let's get creative. <laughs> I mean, that was one of the fun things about your event is it had that feeling of live unpredictability. And for, for people that don't quite get this, like to get vendors to sit down, these are competitors. Like these are people that are used to bashing each other on stage mm. and, and trading barbs, you know, and, and here they are sitting around and what a perfect time too, right? Because the, the, the pandemic circumstances that we're facing and this is not the time to get childish around like, well, our platform is, is truly a uh, omni channel and yours is really single. Like who gives a crap? I mean, we're, we're struggling right now as, as a country, as a, you know, across the world really. And so like, let's get together and the vendors really showed that vibe. And I thought that would, that's what made that program, in my opinion, like had a remarkable feeling. They set the stage for that. You're right. I mean, it was, they were so collegial and and were you know able to, and and a lot of these folks were at least the, there was a, a kind of a a connecting team or person they, those folks kind of knew each other some of them worked for one another at some point in time so there were some good relationships there but the overall vibe that they put out which is basically let's have a a, a thoughtful and uh, also kind of casual and conversational, you know, discussion about what's going on. And, and so they all looked at it from that perspective. And, you know, they're even able to joke, you know, with one another on certain things. And, and I think it was that set the tone. And I think that made the whole event 
you know, just fly and work. Because if if there was, like you said, that kind of traditional one-upmanship kind of mentality or, you know, talking point mentality or scripted, it wouldn't have worked. And and that's not what Paul and I wanted. We wanted, we wanted those folks to come together because we kind of knew they would be feel comfortable with each other, with each other and with us to have that kind of, you know, free flowing conversation that does, did not, would not get bogged down into, you know, people taking, you know, you know, stances or trying to, you know, score points. And so because they were able to to have that kind of discussion and at, at the, towards the end of the, uh, of the conversation with those folks, Paul and I just kind of, we just backed out because they were able to just start talking amongst themselves. And it, it felt like it was just me and Paul at our, in our CRM players weekly happy hour, throw up, throw a question out and just back out the way and let everybody else talk. That was how good it got towards the end. Yeah. And, and, and actually uh, one of your panelists um, broached some really important stuff around um, the pricing and, and basically acknowledging that enterprise pricing, even so-called cloud software pricing is really out of step sometimes. And you certainly see that in the pandemic where, you know, customers really hurting and, and, and basically acknowledging that we need to look harder at how we price software. And like, it, it was just cool because you just, it's very, very rare to hear any kind of vendor executive bring something like that up. Like occasionally like a, a badass, uh, self-described badass like you or me might press that issue like behind the scenes, but for them to bring that up, you don't really see that. So I just thought that was really neat. And, you know, that I, was Bob, I Bob Stutz, by the way, yeah, Bob over at SAP, man, yeah. he, he, he was on fire. Um, Actually, but, but, you know, it wrote a really great piece based off of that too. Oh like, yeah. Yeah. Economica. If you, for you guys, uh, to Genomica fans, <laughs> you can catch Den's, uh, expansion on that topic um on Diginomica as well but but i you know that was the kind of thing where like dem wrote about that because you know he doesn't usually write about video shows you know but that was the kind of thing it was it would just sparked a lot of conversations and that's one of the reasons why i wanted to get back into this myself is because i think there's something about um unscripted conversations like this that is exactly what what the world needs right now so anyhow hey, i'll tell you one thing though we had to do a little pushback because we wanted it to be unscripted. We, you know, and you, you can understand where, you know, some of these big corporate entities want to kind of have as much understanding or control as they can get. But to their credit, we said, you know, this is, we really think a, you know, we can talk about themes, but we really want to make sure the conversation goes where it needs to go organically. So we don't want to put too much out there. And to their credit, they said, okay, we trust you guys. And, uh, and I think that's what made it work. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, let's talk about enterprise video a little bit because you've been, video has been an important part of your pursuits for a long time. I, I would run into you at shows and you always have really creative lightweight gear where you're able to actually film like really cool stuff. Like it's like suddenly you have a video set up. I'm like, how did he do that? Uh, <laughs> Well, what is your what is your goal like like when you when you have a good video shoot with someone what what does that mean? It means that they felt comfortable enough to uh, have a go where the conversation goes, man. It's I can I I, I always like to say, look, there are certain themes that I would love to touch, you know, kind of go over, but I don't have specific questions I want to ask you because I want to be able to. You know, kind of go where your answers go and where the you know, where kind of the conversation ends up, and and that means trying to uh, you know go into some kind of a environment where everybody feels comfortable, man. And sometimes it's just you know, like you said, having some nice mobile technology, and you can go out on a nice sunny day at one of these conferences, just find a quiet little nook, and you just have a, a you know a very Easy going conversation, but easy going can also lead to some really interesting uh, topics and themes to, and, and that you can kind of explore and having, you know, being able to get somebody comfortable enough to 
you know, feel like they can, you know, express themselves in a way that they, they think, uh, you know, it doesn't have to feel like they're being scripted, but it, it feels like they're able to say what they want to say and not be afraid that it's going to be taken in, in, in some kind of a negative context. That's my whole thing. I, I always tell folks, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk to you to try to do some gotcha stuff. I, I just want to be able to, I have questions. I have, I have real questions for myself and, and I want to be able to ask you without you feeling that somebody's going to come out and, you know, throw a camera in your face and say, gotcha. And, and then keep going. So that's, that's the kind of, you know, kind of the mood I want to set. And, I, and it seems to work for me because I, I'm able to really have some great conversations with, with some folks. And, and that's what it's all about. Uh, we got a LinkedIn user asking, is this ERP BW related? Sorry to disappoint. Nope. We're talking the art of enterprise video and, and Brent also covers extensively the CRM slash customer experience market. Cause that's what we call it now is CX. That's what the cool people say. Um, so yeah, you know, I think one of the things for me is like when, when we've adjusted to this virtual world, one of the toughest parts for everyone, both for, for customers, but also for people like us is to really get the authentic story of what's happening in the market. Like, because we get so much polished material from software vendors, oh, basically over-promising, sorry to say, their capabilities around things like AI or what have you, or their great platform. And we're trying to figure out like how, how this really works. And I think, like you said, these kinds of discussions take on a lot of importance right now. And I, I, I like that style of just this notion that when you have a conversation, you don't have a script. You, this isn't overly polished or marketed uh, video. Um, and you know, it's funny how many vendors have trouble with that. Like in my articles where I write about their stuff, I'll take these screen caps of like, cause I think it's cool. Like an executive's in his living room or she's in her like kitchen, like on webcam and she runs this company. And to me, that's human. Right. And, and the cat runs around in the background and, you know, or the kid comes up and, and needs like direction on homework. This is the world we're living in right now. And what's funny is when I put those screen caps in my articles, when the vendors promote the content, a lot of times they pull the screen cap out of their promo and they put in like the, the airbrushed photo that they took <laughs> before the pandemic. And, uh, and it's like, well, that's not what resonates right now. So anyway, I think, you know, your, your time has come like your, your video approach. I think that's the world that we need right now. So, you know, Adobe did a study uh, a couple of months back and I had a chance to talk to, when the folks are there about it, they said that coworkers during the pandemic, when they're you know all working remotely from their home, they said that coworkers actually felt more uh, connected and felt like they they knew their coworkers better in the midst of this pandemic, working from home compared to if they were physically sitting next to each other in their cubicles. So yeah. that tells you something, doesn't it? I mean, that's. Like you're saying, it's you see a whole other perspective. It's like you, the, a third dimension finally comes out about your coworker when you do see a cat come in front of their screen, or your, their little two or three year old screaming, or a, like a little seven or eight year old comes in front of the screen and asks them a question, and it, so they immediately turn from the VP of CX or you know exactly. VP of that of that to mommy or daddy. And you get a glimpse of them that you would have never gotten if you were next to them in their in your cubicles or your offices. And I think that's that's the thing that people want now. They want to have you know, that fuller view, that more human uh, view of of who they are working for, or who they're working with, or even you know, in, even if you're a customer. It's, it's, sometimes it's cool to see that you know the vendor that you're working with or that you've chosen. They're just like me, you know, in a lot of cases. So. Got to talk about Sandy Lowe for a moment because Sandy's been peppering the chat with some sarcastic questions. Uh, Sandy, up? I'm not going to answer all your questions about VIPs in Vegas and stuff. Um, Vegas is a long ways off right now, <laughs> but uh, S Sandy's the queen of corporate communication at Zoho. But but uh, Sandy has an interesting role to play here, Brent, because I don't know if you know this, but a couple years ago, man, maybe about three years ago, Sandy was like. You know, you and Brent, you guys got to be get to know each other. You got to be friends with Brent. And I was like, I don't know, man. Like, 
I see Brett at these shows, but he's like kind of quiet and he doesn't really say anything. I'm not, I'm not even really sure like if he even <laughs> likes me or whatever. Like it was funny, but I was like, well, you know, Sandy, she's cool and I respect her judgment. So I was like, all right, got to check this guy Brent out. And so, uh, so, you know, we owe her a lot, Brent, because, you know, you and I figured out that despite very different styles, I think we, <laughs> we have, we have a, we have a common thread. Yeah. Oh, well, we have a common yeah. thread. All joking and kidding aside, yeah, she's great. She's great at what she does, and she's a great friend. And uh, yeah, but I tell you, I was like, man, I don't know, because this this dude, I heard he was like the bad boy at ERP. <laughs> you know, and, you know. I got I got pigeonholed in the ERP thing, man, and it, it wasn't really it wasn't right. I I cast a wide net. Yes, you absolutely do. Except for you know, I, I, I I'm cool with you, but you know, the Boston sports thing is. Yeah, kind of yeah. Thing that I can't really get with. Yeah, there, we do have uh, we do have some tension when it gets to sports conversations. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but we we won't even go there today because you already did a sports thing today. And by the way, if if you guys want to catch Brent on LinkedIn, basically just connect with him because he does something like a ridiculous amount of video shows a week. But but you got your Thursday afternoon CRM players, which is like this the standby. So definitely check that out. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks, man. So let me just ask you, um, I know you have to go in just a little bit, but um, CRM is kind of your focus. Do you also spend a little more time in the SMB area of CRM or how does that work? Yeah, so um, I would definitely say that, yes, I'm a CRM kind of generalist. And and like you said earlier, CX, funny how these acronyms just come out of nowhere, man. Um, But yeah, I do have a, a... kind of a special sweet spot for uh, the SMB space because, you know, for years that was like the forgotten sector when it came to CRM. And, and of course, you know, a lot of, in a lot of instances, the big vendors, you know, this is in a lot of instances, this is probably before the cloud really took off, especially back then, you know, the big bucks were with the big companies and, you know, the, there wasn't that much interest in the, you know, the zero to 100 market. Um, but of course, that's kind of changed dramatically over the se- last several years with the rise, you know, with the cloud and, and the ability to scale and, and reach customers of all sizes, you know, and, and people can afford a couple of bucks a month or 20, 30 or 40, or 50 bucks a month for, you know, this great software. So, Small and mid-sized business, all of a sudden, it seems to be a little bit more in vogue to a certain extent. Um, their needs are definitely not the same as bigger companies, but they still have needs to, uh, you know, find, catch, and keep good customers. I try to make that an acronym once: find, catch, and keep. Mm. It's it's a little risque because you know, FC. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't use that as an acronym. Well, especially hey. right now, right? I mean, small businesses have really gotten the the rough end of this yeah. deal. Yeah. Because a lot of them just haven't had the cash flow. I mean, I I live in a town. I mean, my friend Corey, if she's still in the chat, Corey, there's been some heartbreaking business closures around here lately. Um, institutions just, you know, that, you know, you y- treasured them because they weren't the big brands and, you know, but man, I mean, how many months can you can you go, you know? And, you know, what I will say this, though. Um, you've seen a number of the vendors, Zoho being one of them, of course, that have really stepped up and have oh, yeah. addressed and helped the small businesses um, that that uh, that are their customers to figure out. And some of them that are not even your customers to help them stay afloat, because like you said, yeah, you know, small small businesses are really having a tough time, and the the vendors are trying to find ways. Some of them are giving grants. Some of them are allowing their you know their customers to use the software for free for a while, and uh, that's that right. says a lot about the you know what the what the cus- kind of the thought behind small businesses has changed dramatically. They they are uh, viewed as very important now. Uh, not just to vendors, but just to the overall economy for the for the country. Yeah, and you can see how 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 important it is, right? Because like the some of the small businesses in my town that did a little better are the ones that figured out how to to make a streamlined online ordering process, right? So like 
you know, I go to my hungry ghost bread shop, like they got the really cool online ordering thing, you know, you pay after the fact or whatever. They got it all figured out for me. Like that made a huge difference, right? And so like the technology ends up playing a crucial role in in like serving customers safely and stuff. So Hungry Ghost, huh? That's a good name. Hungry Ghost Bread. Although I'm only allowed to have like a small bread's not really part of my diet, but yeah. anyway, you got to support local business. So it is what it is. So, so tell me just, just before we wrap up, like when you think about the, the CRM market as a whole, like what, what issues interest you the most? I mean, obviously there's all kinds of stuff. People want to talk about omni channel. I know why they want to do that, but what, what interests you the most in this field? I'm going to go back to, uh, about three or four years ago, oh, gosh, maybe it's longer than that. Um, I got I first got my Amazon Echo device, and I'm trying not to say the A word because you know. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking back to me. We don't. We don't but, need. We don't need am, <laughs> the A A person uh, interfering with our conversation right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. But the whole idea of voice interfaces really captured my attention, mm. um, and I and I thought that. That this is going to change uh, some of the ways that vendors engage with their customers and also how in, uh, employees actually do their job. Um, and so I was really hot on that for a while. And I, you know, I started a column over at ZDNet around this stuff too. But then, like, it just felt like the kind of the momentum that was involved with that whole space kind of fizzled. And mm -hmm. And it started feeling like, well, I mean, the vendors that, you know, I had a lot of the talking with the vendors and the things I was hearing is like, oh, this it doesn't seem like this is this is happening like I thought it was. Yeah, that you had a whole I remember you writing a whole series of articles on ZDNet about that at the time. Yeah. So, and so where do you think we are now? I think actually, you know, I'm, I'm starting to I'm starting to get a little bit of a, a little excitement back. Uh, some of the some of my recent conversation with multiple vendors, a couple of vendors, I'm hearing voice as uh, being mentioned more. And it's actually not just from a consumer experience. It's from an, an employee experience. And, you know, things like, you know, from a CRM perspective, a lot of salespeople hate CRM. They don't want to sit around and have to you know put data into a, a, a application. They want to be out there building relationships and selling stuff. And so I'm starting to in, starting to hear things like we're we're getting closer to having a being able to speak to your applications so that the things that you would have to do normally by typing and swiping and clicking now you know you, you're going to be able to you know just talk and and what is said will dictate what's going on with the application. I'm hearing it from an uh, from like an ERP and HR perspective about. How how do we make these applications easier for our for our employees to get the information that they need in and out of mm. them? So I think actually maybe what happened was some of the the vendors might have underestimated how difficult it is to get voice right, and mm. and it caused them to take a step back, but not a step away, so to speak. And I think now that they have had a little bit more time to to figure it out more and more. I think we're getting closer to the point where we're going to start seeing applications that are you know, will be made to make it easier for folks to get stuff done talking to the applications, uh, not just you know consumers speaking to a, a smart speaker and and barking out requests, but actually having employees a, be able to speak to their applications and get more things done. I think we're going to, you know, a couple of years out, but I, I'm starting to see the momentum coming back to it now. Yeah, I mean, you can certainly see in a business context this issue, right? Because there's all these stats about how much time employees spend like searching for information, right? <clears throat> yeah. And so you can certainly imagine if you could get that right. right. Um, of course, there's a big back end data plumbing thing as part of that too. But if you get that right, that's that's like a huge, huge time saver. Like in a way that like on the consumer side, I don't think it's as big an issue. Like like that part of it but on the work side like where's this or where's that like where's the you know where's the customer record where's the last transaction with this customer even simple stuff like that 
Um, I've seen some amazing demos of that and keynotes, but it seemed like it never really got productized and like out to the masses. Right. You know, but I, even, even to... people asking stuff like, you know, who's my most profitable customer this quarter or whatever, or like interesting yeah. stuff, you know? I think you're, I'm starting to see it more and more. Um, and it's, it's getting to be beyond kind of the dog and pony show, which is what we really had for the last several years. But I think because it was underestimated how tough it is to get it right, it caused them to, to kind of take a step back. And I think now there's more realistic, uh, I guess, a, a more realistic approach to this now. So I think we're getting closer, which will be really fascinating to have this kind of conversation a year from now or maybe a little longer. But I, I have, I'm feeling a little bit more confident that it it is coming and it's not just a dog and pony. Last thing about it, though customer privacy and data privacy is going to be a big part of this because if you don't have that right, nobody's going to want to talk to anything. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, it, my favorite thing is uh, on YouTube, there's some, some African gray parrots that have figured out how to manipulate uh, home mm -hmm. devices like echoes and Google home. It's friggin' fantastic. I can watch videos all day long of parrots churning mu music on and off, uh, turning lights on and off, ordering stuff from Amazon. It's friggin' brilliant. Uh, so uh, if, if, yeah. if parrots can do it, it's got to be coming. You know, it's hey. it's got to be coming. We'll see. It. But uh, yeah, no, I really appreciate you uh, you making the time. I know you've got a thing to jump to in a sec here, but uh, I've been in doing video and podcasts for a lot of different years in a lot of different formats, but I kind of got out of it for a few different reasons. And anyway, I'm back in, but with your help, because you're the one who referred me to the stream stream yard platform. And uh, so yeah, folks yeah. who are wa folks who are watching, I'm streaming this in a few different ways and then it will go out of my audio channels. And so I'm kind of, kind of psyched. There will be more. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I think it's going to be a little, anarchic uh, unpredictable video shows but uh i'm basically going to chase down stuff that uh that other people aren't talking about and talk about that so um, and this is going to be great i i have no doubt that you're going to kill this and i can't wait to see you know the experimentation you do because i just what you just said you don't want to do what everybody else is doing so oh i know God. you're good Whatever you do is going to be different and interesting, man. So I'm it will it will be different. I can tell you that. Whether it succeeds, we will see. But uh, <laughs> anyhow, uh, have a have a great night, Brent. Thanks for hey, man. Thanks a lot. And uh, hey. Patriots, don't go. Oh, uh, well, we we got a we got a tough game this weekend. We got the 49ers and Jimmy G coming back in town. So uh, that's a tough one. It's two teams I really don't like. Yeah, what can I? Say? I'm a Rams fan, of course. That's why I can say stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, well, you, it, it's it's really weird getting trash talk from someone stuck in a non-sports town like Atlanta. But <laughs> sorry, that that's probably a little that's a, that's a low blow. Thanks, so, man. Now I can go sorry. start my weekend on a such a high note. <laughs> oh man, hey hey, uh, thanks for everyone who uh, showed up. Corey it was great to see you in the chat, especially. Um, so, I even know uh, Corey, but thanks. That you yeah yeah yeah. You kept awesome. kept things piping there. Much appreciated. <laughs> All right. We'll catch you guys later. See ya.